tonight. You don't think there will be a better prepared President Obama on stage next week? When you're not that bright, you can't get better prepared. Romney rocks the president. Look, I've been in business for 25 years. I have no idea what you're talking about. And now in a Hannity exclusive, the governor and his running mate Paul Ryan are here with their very first post-debate interview. We will fact check President Obama. What was he doing tonight? He went in there disarmed. The left spirals into full panic mode as liberals search for answers in the wake of the debacle in Denver, and Joe Biden admits he wants to raise your taxes by trillions. Obama and Biden want to raise taxes by a trillion dollars. Guess what? Yes, we do. Rich people are all poor, not And the real Obama is exposed as another disturbing tape emerges from his past. We have it tonight. Plus, a special edition of Media Mash, we investigate race and politics. We are 33 days away from Election Day, and Hannity starts right here, right now. And welcome to Hannity. The consensus is in. Governor Mitt Romney was the decisive winner in last night's presidential debate. Now, in a moment, I will be joined for an exclusive interview by both Governor Romney and his running mate, Congressman Paul Ryan. But first, although even the most left-wing political observers and pundits have conceded that their candidate bombed without his teleprompter last night, Obama aides are trying to peg all of their candidates stumbling and bumbling on Mitt Romney. Believe it or not, yes, they are accusing the governor of lying. Of course... They are the ones that are. Watch this. Again and again and again, he told the story to the American people that it's completely uh, 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 in contrast with what he said before and un, uh, un, unfounded in fact. And that's going to catch up with him. I think that uh, I give him credit for a strong performance. I give him an F for being honest with the American people. All right, here's the sad truth. For 90 minutes, it was President Obama who lied about his record. It was President Obama who lied about what he would do with the second term. You want proof? Here it is. If you want to be president, you owe the American people the truth. The truth. Now with a fact check of the debate. This claim is based on a fiscal fiction. The bipartisan nonprofit committee for a responsible federal budget has called that a gimmick. And the president is also counting on savings agreed to last year when the White House and Congress agreed to raise the debt ceiling. Governor Romney's central economic plan uh, calls for a $5 trillion tax cut. I rate that mostly fiction. Mostly fiction. Tonight, President Obama said that his plan would cut the deficit by four trillion dollars that estimate comes from the left-leaning center on budget and policy priorities social security is uh, structurally sound is going to have to be tweaked but according to the congressional budget office social security will run into financial trouble by the year 2030 the amount social security pays out will exceed the tax revenue coming in president obama accused Mitt romney of proposing a five trillion dollar tax cut and thus adding to the deficit but the nonpartisan website factcheck.org says that is not true Another questionable statement, Obama again said he'd raise taxes on upper-income people only to the rates they were when Bill Clinton was president. But actually, many high-income people would pay more than they did then. President falsely claims his school fiction. That is not true. Mostly fiction. Another again, questionable if you want statement. To be president, you owe the American people the truth. And joining me now for an exclusive interview, the very first since last night's showdown, are Republican presidential candidate Governor Mitt Romney and his running mate, Congressman Paul Ryan. By the way, Congressman Ryan, I know you have to leave in a couple of minutes, so you won't be here the entire time. Uh, all right, Governor, you went into last night's debate. There were a couple of polls out. They, gave, they said that Barack Obama was a two-to-one favorite. Clearly a good night for you. What do you what's your take? Well, I was pleased that I had the chance to talk about my vision for America. Uh, the president was able to answer some questions that I posed that I think Americans across the country have wanted to have answered. And, uh, and it, was a, it was an evening of substance. I, I'm, I'm happy that Jim Lehrer was, was willing to ask us our, our positions on issues and we could describe those. It was not a big gotcha night coming from the moderator, but instead a chance for the president and I to go toe to toe on important issues people care about. So I, I thought it was a helpful night. I think in the final analysis, uh, people will decide what kind of America they want. Congressman Ryan, you're up next. Uh, there have been a lot of controversial statements. I'll show the tape in a little bit, but, but to save a little bit of time, uh, in recent weeks, Joe Biden has said that the middle class the last four years has been buried, and today he went out there <laughs> and said he's going to raise taxes. Yes, we plan to raise taxes over a trillion dollars. Your reaction? Well, he was half right. It's about two trillion dollars, but, you know, every now and then, Joe is a little candid. He drops the veil and he speaks with candor and yeah the middle class has been buried over the last four years he was right when he said that yes they're proposing a massive tax increase 
And two years ago, when they said they were going to prevent this tax increase because we had a bad economy, the economy is growing slower today than it was then when they said that. So they don't have a record to run on. This is why they're running the kind of campaign they're running. What I'm excited, Sean, is last night, the American people got to see the guy I know, a decisive, optimistic, confident leader, a person with a plan to create jobs, grow the economy. That's what the country saw. So they now know they have a very clear choice, growth, opportunity, or stagnation and dependency. The president oh, is basically ahead. saying four more years are the same, and Mick gave them a, a, a better choice. Congressman, but, but because I know you have to go, um, and you're, you're going to be introducing <clears throat> Governor Romney uh, at an event soon, uh, I'll ask you one last question if I can, because you have, you're best known as being a numbers guy. Governor Romney, your, your running mate, he's running for president, last night pointed out the state of our economy. One in six Americans are in poverty, 25 million right. un and underemployed, 17 million more Americans in the last four years on food stamps. That's 49 million Americans. Uh, Governor, I didn't know the statistic you brought up last night, but, but apparently 50 percent of college students are having a hard time getting that first job, and we've got six trillion in new Obama debt in four years. You told me once, Congressman, that we've got maybe two or three years before an economic calamity. Explain what you mean. Yeah, that's what the experts have been coming to the Budget Committee for years saying, which is, if we keep staying on this path, we will have a debt crisis much like what, what is engulfing Europe. We've got to get off this path. Mitt Romney's proposed a plan to get us off this path. President Obama's doubling down in the same direction. So that's the point we're making, Sean. You can't keep spending money we don't have. We will have a debt crisis much like that in Europe. And they say we don't have that much time. So we have a window of opportunity. The next president will decide how this is determined. This man has put a plan out there to prevent that from happening. So we get this economy growing, we prevent a debt crisis, and we save those people who depend on these programs so much that they've been promised for them. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to do. And the country last night saw the choice that they get to make. All right, one last question while the two of you to, uh, together. Governor Romney, mm -hmm. you brought up last night the $716 billion that was taken out of Medicare to help fund Obamacare. Uh, when you were on 60 Minutes, uh, you pointed out that you had a slight disagreement. Do you guys want to debate that while I have the opportunity of the two of you together? <laughs> Uh, probably not. My guess is we'll be debating with the other guys. Yeah. Uh, th the one thing we, we both agree on, and, and that is that, that the president's plan to use $716 billion to fund Obamacare uh, is a mistake. And we're, we're running on the same platform. We're putting that money back into Medicare, taking care of our seniors. And we're also against this Ob Obamacare board that will cut programs for the seniors. They'll actually put price controls that leads to denied care for current seniors. That was a fantastic moment of the debate last night. Seniors see a very clear yeah. choice. We're going to protect this program. The president's rating the program, and it'll lead to rationing of the program. Doesn't it say in the bill, correct me if I'm wrong, about 4,000 times that the board ultimately decides, or some number mm -hmm. thereabout? I'm pretty, am I wrong, Congressman? They commit, they, they have lots of commissions and different boards that they cite. Uh, this one is the one that's in charge of Medicare. All right, uh, Congressman, we're going to let you go. Thank you for being with us. Governor Romney stays with us. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we got 12,000 people out here excited to see us. All right, well, uh, I don't want to keep 12,000 people. We only have 4 million people here that want to see you, but uh, so we're, we're competing. Uh, thank you very much for your time. Let's go to a montage as we go back to Governor Romney. Uh, some of his best moments from last night. I don't have a $5 trillion tax cut. I don't have a tax cut of the scale that you're talking about. My view is that we ought to provide tax relief to people in the middle class. But I'm not going to reduce the share of taxes paid by high-income people. High-income people are doing just fine in this economy. They'll do fine whether you're president or I am. The people who are having the hard time right now are middle-income Americans. Under the president's policies, middle-income Americans have been buried. They're, they're just being crushed. I will not reduce the share paid by high-income individuals. I, I know that you and your running mate keep saying that, and I know it's a popular thing to say with a lot of people, but it's just not the case. Look, I got five boys. I, I'm used to people saying something that's not always true, but just keep on repeating it and ultimately hoping I'll believe it. But that, that is not the case. My priority is putting people back to work in America. They're suffering in this country. And we talk about evidence. Look at the evidence of the last four years. It's absolutely extraordinary. 
We've got 23 million people out of work or stop looking for work in this country. All right. It's just, it's, we've got, we got, when the president took office, 32 million people on food stamps, 47 million on food stamps today. I'm sorry, Jim, I I'm going to stop the subsidy to PBS. I'm going to stop other things. I like PBS. I love Big Bird. I actually like you, too. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep on spending money on things to borrow money from China to pay for it. So you said you get a deduction for taking a plant overseas? Look, I've been in business for 25 years. I have no idea what you're talking about. I maybe need to get a new accountant. Uh, but but the, the idea that you get a break for shipping jobs overseas is simply not the case. Now, do you agree, Governor, that the, maybe the altitude had an impact on the president last night? Because that was Al Gore's theory. <laughs> Look, it was a chance for each of us to describe our vision for the country. And the president talked about his vision, which was basically a continuation of the policies of the last four years. He wants another stimulus. Uh, he wants to have government investing for us. Uh, he wants to hire more government workers. He wants to raise taxes. As the Vice President Biden blurted out today, they, they want to raise taxes by a trillion dollars. It's more like two trillion by our calculation. But look, he, he's laid out the same policies but he's been following for the last four years. And I don't think that sells very well when people hear that. He, he also didn't have the chance to continue to misrepresent my views. I got the chance to present my own perspectives, and I think that helped me. Do you, do you think to some extent that the Obama campaign is overreached uh, by calling you a tax cheat and uh, attacking Bain Capital and even suggesting that you were responsible for the death of this man's wife, Joe Soptic, uh, et cetera, et cetera? In other words, they spent millions and millions of dollars advancing a narrative against you. You know, the president himself saying that your plan is for dirty air and dirty water and, and you want kids with autism and Down syndrome, the elderly to fend for themselves. To, to some extent, that, do you think that by overreaching and then when people had a chance to see you both side by side, that it may be that that partly played into um, the overwhelming belief by the American people that you're not this evil monster that Barack Obama painted you into being? Well, that may be part of the, uh, uh, the event last night. That's what I hoped we'd have the chance to do, was to actually see people and, and, and describe what I want to do to help the American people. Uh, I, you know, I have watched uh, some of the attacks that have come my way, and you just shake your head. I, I do recall that in the president's acceptance speech four years ago, he said that if you don't have a record to run on, you attack your opponent. You, you try and disqualify your opponent. And, and early on in this campaign, there were Democrat strategists, one in particular, who said their campaign strategy was to kill Romney. Uh, hopefully not literally. Uh, I mean, this, th this kind of character assassination is something which I, I think has gone way too far and I, I think is an unfortunate part of this uh, campaign and the president's part. I think it diminishes the White House. The, the, the nice thing about last night, from my standpoint, was that we each got to talk about our own vision for America and where we take it. And I think the American people, in the final analysis, will put aside the theatrics and will focus on who can make my life better. And I'm convinced that the policies I described will make life better for the American people. Well, with 35 days to go, it's obvious, uh, and I was watching David Axelrod on the morning programs this morning, uh, like you, I'm sure you didn't get much sleep. Um, it, there is now a concerted effort to deconstruct what happened last night and, and sort of like make people doubt what they saw. Um, and the term that, he, that we played earlier, that you lied, uh, that you misrepresented, that you were acting. Um, well, the president in Denver today kind of doubled down on the same narrative, um, and I wanted to give you a chance to respond to what he said earlier today. So you see, the man on stage last night, he does not want to be held accountable for the real Mitt Romney's decisions and what he's been saying for the last year. And that's because he knows full well that we don't want what he's been selling for the last year. So Governor Romney may dance around his positions, but if you want to be president, you owe the American people the truth. It seems like he's insinuating, Governor, that you were lying. Your reaction? Well, uh, obviously, uh, the president wasn't happy with uh, the response to, uh, to our debate last night, and, and the, the reality is that over the last couple of years, I've been followed by I don't know how many members of the media. <laughs> it's quite a, quite a crew that we travel around with, and they go to my rallies and go to the roundtables I participate in, and uh, they hear the things that I'm saying to folks, and it's the same message I've been saying across America, which is I want to bring our tax rates down. 
I want to lower deductions and exemptions, broadening the base, if you will, particularly for people at the high end. I don't want to bring a big tax reduction for people at the top end. I want their share of the tax burden to remain as it is today. I want to help middle-income taxpayers. These are messages I've been talking about across America. And what I find so offensive about his tax plan is by raising taxes on small business, as he does, he will kill jobs. And right now, what America needs, as much as anything else, is more jobs, more jobs, more take-home pay. That's the whole focus of my campaign. And I know what the president's been campaigning on and, and saying about me is very different than what I actually am, what I actually believe. And I, I think that's where the difference came. What the president's been saying and the reality are pretty far apart. Let me ask you this, because one of the things that, that liberals were so angry about, and, uh, and you didn't bring up, for example, uh, a moment that I'm sure the president would long like to forget when the president said uh, that people in the Midwest and Pennsylvania, Ohio, were bitter, clinging to God, guns, Bible, religion, a, a comment that he made back in the 2008 campaign. And, and, but the left seems furious that this tape where you talked about the 47 percent, why didn't President Obama bring that up? Um, what would you have said if he did bring it up? Well, uh, clearly in a, in a campaign with hundreds, if not thousands of speeches and question and answer sessions, uh, now and then you're going to say something that, that doesn't come out right. In this case, I said something that's just completely wrong. And uh, I, I absolutely believe, however, that my life has shown that I care about 100%. And, and that's been demonstrated throughout my life. And this whole campaign is about the 100%. When I become president, it will be about helping the 100%. As I pointed out last night in the debate, the rich in this country are actually doing better un pre under President Obama. The, the gap between the rich and the poor has gotten larger. The, the, rich, the rich will probably do fine even if he's reelected. It's the middle class that's in real trouble if President Obama is reelected. And the poor. I want the poor to get into the middle class. So many have fallen into poverty by virtue of his policies. So this for me is all about the 100 percent. And, and, you know, the president can... Uh, uh, can talk about the things he'd like to talk about. I'm going to talk about how I'm going to well, get America working again and help all the people of this it, country. It seemed like the president had a hard time. He kept telling you about your plan and you kept correcting him. No, there you go again sort of moment. That's not my plan. Um, you were saying some very specific things about how to increase revenues to the government, how to balance the budget, including putting the $716 billion back into Medicare, not gutting our defenses, keeping tax rates low and cutting taxes for the middle class. And the president doesn't seem to understand that fewer people needing government assistance, more people working, uh, a growing economy results in more revenues to the, to the government. And people are saying, well, the math doesn't add up. I want to give you another shot to, to explain it because maybe some people don't understand uh, exactly what you're saying and, and how it is that a growing, thriving economy actually is good for the federal government because they benefit with revenue. Well, I think people can understand that if you raised taxes, you might say, well, that's going to bring more money to the government. But don't forget, if you raise taxes, then people have less money of their own, particularly businesses, big businesses, small ones, uh, companies that are taxed at the individual tax rate. If you raise taxes on them, they have less money to spend and to hire people with. The best way to get a balanced budget at the federal government level is to have this economy grow so more people are working. If more people are working, more people are paying taxes. And by the way, if there's competition trying to hire people, yeah. if there's lots of uh, business activity, wages go up, take-home pay goes up. That's more tax revenue. By far the most powerful way to get us to a balanced budget is to grow the economy. And that's why my plan, my tax plan, which is estimated to create 7 million jobs, will help us more than anything else to get to that balanced I, budget. I know that you, uh, this was not about foreign policy last night. Uh, we have been following very closely on this program the issue in Benghazi, the death of our ambassador the first time in 30 years, two Navy SEALs. Do you believe there's a cover-up going on? Well, Sean, uh, first let me note my, uh, my uh, condolences and, and sympathy for the families of those who lost their lives and, uh, and my respect uh, for those who fought so bravely for us. Those, uh, those two former SEALs that were there on a private assignment, they weren't working uh, for the government uh, in an uh, official capacity at the time this occurred. I just uh, I think so much of them. Uh, I, I believe, obviously, that what happened there was a uh, tragic failure. There had been warnings of a possible attack. 
uh, there were requests on the part of our of our uh, commission there, uh, of our of our diplomats there rather, to have additional uh, security forces. They were turned down, and then uh, following the the tragedy, uh, we saw well misleading uh, information coming from the administration. And, and in fact, the president didn't acknowledge that this was a terrorist act for for what a week or two. I mean, th this was a terrorist attack. Uh, lives were lost. This happened on 9/11. Uh, we expect candor and transparency from the president, from the administration, and we didn't get it. All right, Governor, good to see you. Uh, good night last night for you. Obviously, everyone, even liberals, Chris Matthews agreed. Uh, pretty amazing. Thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. And coming up, stunned and left in total disbelief, the president's media army is